Hey guys, so let's talk a little bit about Linux gaming, or what I think are the top 5 best open source and native games available on Linux. These are 5 games that are free and open source and are available for download from any of the major Linux software storefronts, that being Flathub, App Image Hub, or the Snap Store. And when I say the best Linux games, I mean like most recognized or renowned for what they do rather than my own personal favorites. A few of these games are really popular within the Linux community, but rather obscure on the outside, so hopefully this video brings some attention to some of these awesome free and open source gems. And we're going to be going through the games backwards in this list, starting with number 5 and working our way to number 1, which I consider the best of the best open source games. Starting at number 5 with Xenotic. Xenotic is an arena-style first-person shooter with crisp movement and a wide array of weapons. You can think of it a bit like an open-source equivalent to OG Unreal Tournament, which is actually kind of weird because it's based on a fork of the Quake engine. It began development in 2011 or 2005 depending on whether you count the upstream project it was forked from. The developers proudly state that Xenotic will always be free to play and modify under the copyleft GPL version 3 license, and the source code for the game and the game engine it runs on is available in GitLab. Now, Xenotic is basically your run-of-the-mill fast-paced arena shooter. There's a campaign mode, but it's basically just a set list of maps and objectives. There's a built-in server browser that you can use to find a multiplayer server, or you can just host a local game and play against some bots. There's over a dozen different game modes, including Soccer, Capture Point, King of the Hill, Capture the Flag, that type of thing. It's nice because it adds variety to otherwise very linear gameplay. It's just a fast-paced first-person shooter. Number four on the list is not a fast-paced first-person shooter. It is a voxel-based RPG written in Rustlang. You may have heard of it. It's called Velerin. It's clearly inspired by games like Cube World, but also Legend of Zelda, but despite looking similar to the former, it's actually a very unique game. There's surprisingly little information on the origin of Velerin besides some documentation and old developer interviews. It seems that the main reason it exists is to be something of a prototype for a big immersive 3D game written in Rust instead of C or C++. The entire game is licensed under the GPL, so anyone, anywhere, can make use of it. After you create a character, you typically start in a city with a whole giant continent to explore. Like, seriously, it's an entire continent. You can climb to the nearest hilltop and just glide around, which is arguably the coolest thing about this game. Unfortunately, the game is still in development, and after you play for a while, you'll realize that the world feels very empty. But that doesn't keep it from being fun, especially if you want to play it online like an actual MMO and run into players and stuff in the wild. And number three is Zero AD. And Zero AD is an open source historical real-time strategy game developed by a company called Wildfire Games. As the leader of an ancient civilization, you must gather resources you need to raise a military force and dominate your enemies. Zero AD started out as a total conversion mod for Age of Empires 2 back in 2001. In 2003 they decided to spin it off into its own game, and in 2009 that game was released fully open source under the GPL as Zero AD. If you've played Age of Empires or Empire Earth or basically any popular RTS from the 2000s, you'll be familiar with the mechanics of Zero AD. You pick a nation, build it up, and crush your opponents. That's about it. There's lots of configuration, you can even set the AI to passive if you want to sit there and just like build a cool looking empire. And yeah, if you like this type of real-time strategy game, Zero AD is probably the best one around, at least in the open source world. And number two is Super Tux Kart. Super Tux Kart is a 3D arcade racer with a variety of tracks, game modes, and characters based on open source project mascots. Super Tux Kart is probably one of the most ubiquitous open source games as you can find it on iOS, Android, and even the Nintendo Switch. It's a fork of OG Tux Kart all the way back in 2006 and it's still in active development with the latest version being released just last month. An interesting thing about Super Tux Kart is that it uses the same tiny graphics engine library that Mindtest does. So technically Super Tux Kart and Mindtest are rendered using the same graphics library. 
And I know at first glance it's easy to compare it to Super Mario Kart, especially the older versions of Super Mario Kart, but when you play it and especially look at the story, it's actually more similar to Diddy Kong Racing, but it has a lot of original concepts that neither of those games have. In the story mode, you fight against the evil Nolok, which actually appears in other Tux-related games, but you have to defeat him in order to make the mascot kingdom safe once again. You can race by yourself or in a time trial mode or compete against the computer in several Grand Prix Cups, which allow you to unlock new maps and things, which is a really cool touch. You can also just race, battle, or play football mode with up to eight friends in multiplayer. Cool stuff. And the game that takes first place ranking on this list is Battle for Wesnoth. The Battle for Wesnoth is an open source, turn-based, high fantasy strategy game it features a single player campaign with a rich story as well as online hot seat multiplayer. Battle for Wesnoth takes the first slot here because it has, in my opinion, the most polished and best presentation of any other open source game I have played. The gameplay and graphics are just great and the world is huge and there's a ton of lore and not to mention the active community that is constantly adding content and writing lore and it's just crazy to see what's going on behind this game. And unlike others on this list, Wesnoth isn't just like a clone or a fork of an existing game, especially like one that was popular at the time. Wesnoth started in 2005, and the original developer just kind of wanted to make a free and open source strategy game with challenging AI to play with. That's it. The game is written in mostly C++ with all of the scripting done in Lua and Python, and all of the assets from the music to the sprites are freely licensed under Creative Commons. It's inspired by Warsong and Master of Monsters from the Sega Genesis, but it reminds me a lot of Might and Magic or even the Disciples series of games. You've got six factions to choose from, all of them with unique units and lore. In a regular battle, you earn gold by capturing buildings. You recruit units by spending that gold, so there's an incentive to capture your opponent's buildings to cut off their income. Units and factions get bonuses based on their alignment and their terrain and all sorts of stuff. The campaign mode is my favorite because there are usually dynamic scenarios that tell a story. They're really well done, even down to the artwork, which is really impressive for an open source game. I mean, overall, Wesnoth is just a really, really cool and unique game. And if you like turn-based fantasy games like this, this is one you can't miss. And that's going to wrap it up for this top five video. I want you to let me know what your favorite open source games are in the comments, and maybe I will feature a video on it someday. Going into the new year, I'd like to delve back into doing game reviews and things like that. I thought a good way of breaking the ice was to talk about what I think the top 5 best Linux games at the moment are. I appreciate all your support, and thanks for watching.